Ooh. Oh, it's so hot. But look at how like crispy the bottom side of the crust is, and it's just dripping. Wow. Give you a close up. Whew. Back here. Oh. Rings in here. Hey, Nom Nom Nation. So good to see you guys. Welcome to my new mukbang channel where we talk, hang out, have fun. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you subscribe. I hope you like. It really helps out, especially building a new channel. I have so much to tell you about today. I just got back from an awesome vacation with my wife um, over Thanksgiving slash our fourth anniversary. Our anniversary was on Thanksgiving Day, actually. And one of the best things ever happened to me. I had the best meal of my whole life. I want to tell you all about it and show you some photos and videos from it. Whole thing. But first, let's get our pizza ready here. I'm um, just gonna make like a classic, very simple hot honey pizza. Hot honey is actually gonna go on after it's in the oven. But we're just starting with the, I'm using this tomato and basil sauce like store bought. This is a dough that I've had resting in the fridge. It's just store bought dough. I thought, let it sit in the fridge. This one sat for a while. It sat for like a week or more. Um, but they just develop, you know, they ferment and they develop flavor. And yes, my hands are washed. I was going to use a spoon, but I forgot to bring one over and it's too hard to get up from the seat to go get one. People always think like, oh, you need to use gloves. A glove can be just as dirty as a hand. It all depends on what you touched before. And the last thing I touched before this was washing my hands before I sat down to the film. So we are Gucci. So tomato basil sauce, not too heavy on it, just light. Careful not to get it. Like I like to go to the edge, but not under the edge because then it doesn't want to slip off the pizza peel when you throw it in the oven and you have a problem. We have whole milk mozzarella. This stuff spreads like crazy. So I'm just gonna do like a smattering of it. Or you know what word I like? Spangle. We're gonna spangle this. You never hear it used as a verb. I think it should be used more. Cause you know what, you have the star spangled banner, which implies that you can spangle something. That's spangled. That's gonna look way more cheesy when it all melts. And I cut, I like to get a stick of pepperoni so I can kind of control the thickness of the, the peppies. And today I didn't want little round slices. I wanted every bite to have some pepperoni in it, so. I did little, you know, little cubes. I cut the pepperoni thick in half, so it's like two crescent moons, and laid it out and stripped down, stripped down, stripped down, stripped down, and then chop, 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 chop. Like you're cutting up an onion or something. It's hard to say how much is too much, because you keep adding them, you're going to get real salty, though. But we have the hot honey coming that will add a little sweetness to contrast it, so that was probably enough. Just pre-mix Italian seasoning a little bit. And I like garlic powder. Sometimes it's fun to fry up like thin slices of garlic, garlic chips, and put it on. Or use like a fried garlic in oil and spread that on a, a pizza. But garlic powder, honestly, garlic powder honestly adds a lot. Okay, I'm gonna put this in a 550 degree oven for five to 10 minutes, probably closer to 10, because I like mine a little dark and crispy. And it's on, I'm using a pizza steel, just a sheet of steel in the oven that's been super heated and make it a very nice crust. I'll be right back if I can extricate myself from this difficult setup here. <laughs> Sorry. It's too hard to cut it sitting down, so I'm just gonna cut it standing up real quick. Give her a swirl of the hot honey. 
This isn't a product placement or sponsor or anything. I just like this stuff. But it is very hot, so. Especially this is the extra, extra hot. This smells insanely delicious. My glasses were slipping down, so it's easier to take them off. Ooh. Oh, it's so hot. But look at how like crispy the bottom side of the crust is, and it's just dripping. Wow. Give you a close up. Whew. Let's give that a second to cool down so I don't completely burn my mouth away. And I gotta tell you guys about this trip my wife and I took for our fourth anniversary. It happened to be on Thanksgiving Day this year. So we go down to DC, take the train. We found this amazing, super cheap hotel right in downtown, and it's surrounded on all these blocks by all these amazing Jose Andres restaurants. Of course, on our anniversary, like, everything is closed because it's Thanksgiving, but we went to a Gyukaku. I don't know if that's how you say it, but it's like a Japanese barbecue place with the, you know, the barbecue in the middle of the table. You could call your own meats, tons of fun. You know, nothing incredibly fancy, but very just a good old fashioned good time having fun cooking meats. But the next day, that's when I had the best dinner I've ever had. So good, I had to type up a list of everything because there are so many courses I couldn't remember. But it was at Haleo, I think is how you say it. J-A-L-E-O. It's like a Spanish tapas restaurant. And we got the like tasting menu, the ultimate tasting menu they have called Jose's Way, named after the chef. And let me just run you down here. And I got some videos to show you of all these delicious foods. So I had a, a cocktail called a harana, uh, which had a bunch of different ingredients in it. Um, which is mainly why I ordered it, because I was confused as to how it would taste, and I wanted to try it, and it was amazing. It was, like, interesting and kind of chocolatey coffee, almost, in parts, and sweet but bitter. It was Palo Cortado, 20 years, Wellington, Yazagire Rojo Reserva Vermouth, Luz Tau Solera Reserva Brandy, and Campari. I don't know what all those things are, but it was so good first course they brought out to us was uh, salmon tartare and trout roe and these little like crispy cones they were both amazing but the um the roe oh my god it's perfection just that like salty bite and the crunch and the decadence of the way it's served it's so good they brought liquid olives which are the juice from green olives mixed with some like kind of chemical sodium gluconate and they drop them in a bath of water to like solidify them back into a ball and then serve them in a spoon coated with more like amazing olive oil and it just you put it in your mouth and it just like pops and it's just like having a mouthful of the best olive you've ever tasted but it's buttery and smooth it's so good then they brought out jamon iberico you know thinly sliced aged ham with raw manchego cheese and these toasted slices of bread with just like fresh, like ground up tomato, like pulpa on them. Oh my God, we ate them like little like toast sandwiches. So tasty, the cheese was amazing, the meat was amazing. Just fresh and delicious. Potato salad with tuna in it, an imported tuna and then trout roe on top of it. Best potato salad I've ever had, mind blowing. And then endives with goat cheese, oranges and almonds which sounds weird, but it works so well for some reason. Then they hit us with the fried food and it took me to my happy place. They do these little like, um, I mean, they almost look like pizza rolls. They're uh, fried bacon wrapped dates with apple mustard, sweet and a little spicy from the mustard, uh, with the savoriness of these like thin slices of bacon that just melt in your mouth. You, it's not like you a big heavy piece of bacon that you're like chomping through, you just put it in your mouth and it explodes and you get the chewiness of the sweet date with the savoriness of the other ingredients. Amazing. And then also chicken fritters in the same manner. And it's, it tastes like Thanksgiving, really. It tastes like grandma's cooking or something. It tastes like chicken and dumplings with a crispy shell. That's, I could eat a million of those, but it's good to have diversity. So we move on to a fried egg with onions and caviar that you could just like pop open the egg and put little bits of that on your toast. Delicious. 
and then the real star of the show, a squid ink paella uh, made of toasted fideo pasta with head on shrimp and, you know, whole squid chopped up in there. Super good. Um, super messy. I, my napkin was just black by the end of this. Uh, my mouth was black. And later on, you know, the back door ended up being black too. But it tasted delicious. When I first got it, I thought it was like shrimp served on some kind of charcoal material or like burnt pasta as like a presentation before I put a spoon in it and saw it was soft and delicious and garlicky and buttery and rich. Then the super rich dish came after that. And that was catalones stuffed with pork, chicken, foie gras, and covered in bechamel and like um, baked or put under, you know, a heat source to get it all toasty on top and cheesy in a, a little like pan. It was like having foie gras stuffed enchiladas covered in, you know, cream sauce. But the best version of every ingredient you've ever, ever, ever had. It was so rich, but so good. Oh my god. And then we're not done yet. You still have to keep eating. They brought out two desserts. There was a chocolate custard with caramelized bread and this thin little slice on top. Olive oil and then a brioche crumb, like, coated the ice cream and the chocolate custard to give you a little texture. So good. So nice to have that savory bread with the sweet uh, cream or the sweet custard and the sweet ice cream. Like, beautiful contrast. And then there was a flan with Catalan cream and oranges, and the flan is like his grandmother's or his mother's recipe. The flan was so creamy and smooth, but had like body to it and flavor. And then the cream, I don't know what Catalan cream is, Catalan cream. It's the best like whipped cream I've ever had. It's thick and delicious and amazing. I'm... Wow, let's get some pizza though. Talking about food is making me hungry. Mmm. Look how thin that crust is. That's what I love about, like, aging my pizza dough. I said I get this thin, super crispy crust that can hold up to the toppings. And you see, I was telling you this cheese would spread out a lot. It'd be way more cheesy than it looked raw. And it did. It did. <laughs> I'm so happy. It's so simple, so good. If there's anything I learned from eating at fancy restaurants, sure. You can use wild cooking techniques and, you know, fancy tools and stuff. And that can achieve things that you can't achieve at home. But mainly, it's just simple ingredients of extremely high quality used together sometimes in innovative pairings that you wouldn't have thought of. And the thing is, at home, for some of these... Obviously, you can't get the quality of ingredient they can get at a, you know, super high-end restaurant where they're buying things in bulk and they have access to different suppliers and stuff that you're not going to find at Walmart. <laughs> but that wasn't the only good eating we did in D.C. We also ate... We went to Ben's Chili Bowl, really famous chili uh, place in D.C. where they serve what's called a half smoke. I don't know why it's called a half smoke. It's like a smoked sausage, uh, chili, onion, dog. So good. The sausage was amazing. It's really big. I got the spicy version, which was great. My wife got the um, the regular, which is also a little spicy, just not as much. Super good. It's hard to say if I like that or like a Detroit dog more, like a Coney dog. Um, Detroit, they usually serve it with more onions, which I do like raw white onion on a hot dog. So maybe if I could merge the two, that would be my ideal. The DC chili it was less sweet than the Detroit, which I actually like. It's more smoky and savory. And you get a bigger sausage. 
that has more flavor to the sausage itself than just like a regular hot dog. So I like that part. Mm. I also did an amazing brunch, which was a whole rosé flight paired with all these different dishes at a restaurant called Zatinia. A Turkish, Mediterranean, Greek mashup kind of restaurant. Amazing hummus, maybe amazing baba ganoush, shakshuka, uh, chicken shawarma. One of my favorite things was a, um, a pide, I think is how you say it, but it's like a kind of pastry crust little pizza like thing with um, caseri cheese and chopped chives. I think there might have been egg on there maybe. And the Turkish sausage, so good. And we got to see all the sights. Well, not all the sights. We were only there for, I think, two days. This is so good. I actually put some more honey on it. Uh, went to the African American uh, like history and culture museum, which I think is fairly new. Wow, that honey is good. Parts of it are very sad, but it's a very cool museum. And of course, it's free. Pro tip, they do do timed entry tickets. It's all free, you just have to reserve it online. I think you can reserve it like 30 days in advance. So we reserved all the museums we wanted to go to in advance that had timed entry. So it was that museum. And we went to the Air and Space Museum, which is very popular, so you have to do timed entry for that but even with the timed entry people line up like half an hour before ahead of time for air and space and then they like let you all in at once and just scan your tickets really fast and they tell you like keep moving just go in <laughs> but obviously air and space is a great fun museum i love getting to see you know the actual like Apollo capsule they have, um, the real suits that have been on the moon, it's crazy cool stuff. But one of my favorite things we saw there, no other than of course we walked all around the mall, we saw the Washington Monument, we saw the Lincoln Memorial, we went around the Capitol a little bit, and we went to, um, the Martin Luther King Memorial, which is, I think, just 10 years old now, and it's really neat. <laughs> this pizza. Pepperoni makes me thirsty, though. But we saw a museum right before we left. The National Portrait Gallery. And the National Portrait Gallery has, like... All the presidential portraits, which is really cool. Including like the um, Kehinde Wiley portrait of Obama, which is so good. I've loved Kehinde Wiley for a long time. I forgot where I first heard of him, but I remember it might have been 10 years ago or so, going to an exhibit of just his work at the Brooklyn Museum where I really got introduced to him and oh my god. He's my favorite contemporary portrait artist. And one of my favorite of all time. The way he uses like Victorian wallpaper patterns as his backgrounds, so cool.
but they also have collections of self-taught and folk artists and, um, you know, non-presidential portraits from, you know, the 1700s and on. And uh, I think they also had some indigenous works and landscapes and stuff. They're like, oh, portrait gallery, they wouldn't have landscapes, but they have some beautiful, like, American landscapes and some landscapes that were inspired by, like, American frontier, westward expansion, um, but not, like, mashups of real locations to make them look dramatic and make them more sellable to a European audience, because artists gotta live. Mm. And everything we did, we just walked, or we took the metro, never once had to hire an Uber or whatever, you know, saved so much money. We got the unlimited Metro Pass, worth every penny. Only saw a man taking a poop on the subway once, but he was doing it sitting on top of a trash can in the station, so that's kind of the most polite way to do it. And being from New York, it's nothing new. It wasn't shocking. Their subway's actually very, very clean, way cleaner than New York's. And their, like, stations are a lot grander and they have this like unified style that's really cool with all their they're all like tunnels uh instead of like the new york subway which is like just being in a dirty basement these are like beautiful concrete tunnels with art on either end and they have way less advertising and i have no idea how they have no graffiti maybe it's just not a cultural thing there <laughs> Pizza might be my favorite food. There's just so much you can do with it. Even just this simple pizza is so good. And I love bread. And pizza is just a fun way of eating bread, really. It's like a giant open-faced sandwich. On the way back from DC to New York, we decided to take a bus, which I've never really ridden a long distance bus before outside of the context of um, high school orchestra competitions. But the train was really busy, and so they raised prices when there's more demand, so the train was expensive. The bus was only $99 a seat, and it was like a luxury bus where they only sit like a few people and I, we had like four to six feet of leg room in between the seats it's crazy and the seats all like canceled out the motion of the bus so they moved around all the time to keep you still in relation to the movement of the bus so comfy unlimited free snacks and drinks I didn't really want to drink anything because I didn't want to have to get up and pee on the bus but I still got a ginger ale because I put it in my like carry-on bag and just brought it home for my wife to have earlier. And the nice Scrooge's lady came, just kept coming around with more snacks. And so every time I just took a bag of Cheez-Its and like tucked it into my seat. And when we left, I just threw all these Cheez-It bags into my bag and I got a ton of, I mean, I guess they're not free Cheez-Its, but you know, kind of free Cheez-Its. That said, I think I'd probably prefer the train when it's available just because it's more predictable. And the ride is always smooth no matter what. You don't have to worry about the bus having to brake for people pulling out in front of you. And Obviously, coming back into New York City, you go through the Lincoln Tunnel, and that is just the worst traffic in the world. And everyone's, you know stressed out and mad and honking and cutting you off and you're just going er, 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 er. so it's a very stressful way to end the journey but 
but overall I had such a great time and I can't wait to go back and try more restaurants and try some of the same restaurants and order different things. Mm. Ooh, that pizza. But I want to thank you guys for watching this video and hopefully subscribing to this new channel, hitting the like button. Mm. It means a lot to me to have you here and to have this new space where we can converse more, hang out, and not make the ASMR people mad because I'm talking. Thank you again for watching, guys. I love you so much. I'm going to try to convince my wife to eat some of this because I think she might like it. Bye. I'm stuck. I'm stuck.